Singapore scientists have discovered the so-called food that cancer stem cells are addicted to. They say the finding may change the way doctors treat cancer and prove the difference between recovery and relapse. Faris Jiraimi brings us more. Like humans need food and water, our cells need a specific amino acid commonly found in meat and fish to thrive. But this compound called methionine also feeds cancer stem cells. It reacts with an enzyme, MAT2A, to create a secondary substance that's crucial to the survival of these cells. What if this reaction can be stopped? Researchers are only just beginning to understand more about this process. They transplanted cancer stem cells containing methionine into a batch of lab mice. They repeated this with another group, but without the compound. This is what happened. The cells without methionine resulted in tumours that were 20 times smaller than the ones with the compound. Our study hoped to shed light on how we can begin to think about targeting cancer stem cells. And through our study, what we identify is a nutritional pathway that the cancer stem cells uses. And if we can block and starve them of methionine or use a drug to block the pathway, we can actually more effectively kill off that tumour. While this seems like good news for doctors who treat cancer, it may just be half the battle won. Chemotherapy, which is often used to treat cancer, typically shrinks tumours. However, it doesn't eradicate cancer stem cells. And that's how a relapse could happen. What we hope is that we can actually block the regrowth of the tumour and prevent relapse from happening, making cancer therapies more effective. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step and we are taking the first step into identifying this target and thinking about how to target this target. Dr. Tam and his team are hoping their discovery can help produce a next generation drug to help patients and turn the tide in a long battle against cancer. All right, and for more, we're joined by senior author of the study, Dr. Tam Wai Leong. Yes, he's the group leader for precision oncology at the Genome Institute of Singapore. Dr. Tam, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me here. Now, firstly, uh, help us understand uh, the, your study that sheds light on you know, how to target cancer stem cells through what you call a nutritional pathway. What does that mean? So what we found was that you know, methionin is an amino acid that the body needs, and we get methionin from the diets from the food sources that, that we eat. And methionine is what we call essential amino acids. It cannot be produced by the body. And methionine is converted to this molecule that is called SAM or SAM. And SAM has important functions in gene regulation activities, meaning that it tells the cells when to turn the gene off and when to tell it, turn, the, turn the gene off. And methionine is converted to SAM by this important enzyme that is called MAT2A, which is the subject of this um, study here. And the tumor, a tumor in the human body is quite complex. There are different cell types within this tumor. And we're very intrigued by these two cell types called the cancer stem cells and the non-cancer stem cells. And because cancer stem cells are what we thought to be the root of resistance and relapse in a tumor. And we're intrigued by the nutritional needs of these two different um, cell types. And what we found was that cancer stem cells seems to need or addicted to methionin. So they consume tons of methionin to support their activities. So you see different types of cancer cells like human beings, you and me, who have different preference for food. They have different preference for activating different nutritional pathway. And by being able to understand which nutritional pathways that they depend on, we can then target these pathways within the cells and more precisely treat a tumor. Okay, so, but you just mentioned there that it's found in meat and fish. Methionine feeds us. Correct. How do you, how do you then stop it from feeding the good cells and, and, and the bad cells? How do you differentiate the mm -hmm. two then? So that's a great question, and um, methionine is needed by all cells in the body, be it cancer cells or, or normal cells. But what we found was that the cancer stem cells are addicted to methionine, meaning that they need a lot more of it, right? And we need to understand what is this cycle called the methionine cycle that converts methionine to SAM, which produces a substrate for gene regulation. And this enzyme that we found, which is called MAT2A, is crucial in cancer stem cells for driving this function. So if we can develop a compound or inhibitor that we can shut off this pathway, then we tend to preferentially affect and kill off the cancer stem cells by sparing the normal cells of the body. So this is what we call a therapeutic window mm -hmm. where we can target the cancer cells by leaving the normal cells relatively unharmed. Now, we're not there yet. Uh, so in the meantime, what can people do? What should, they be mind what should we be mindful of when it comes to the food that we eat? Because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not so easy to just give up fish and meat. I mean, and you're talking about foods that 
we need to sustain our lives in any case. That's right. So, I mean, this study is not so much about the diet that we, need, that we eat, but it's more about, you know, the diet that cancer cells tends to um, utilize. And obviously, I would say that, you know, eat everything in moderation. And obviously, for patients with cancer, the important thing is to talk to your, the, their oncologist, their doctor, and find out how to get treatment options and what kind of diet they should, they should go for. Mm. Okay, speaking of the diet, um, are there specific foods like you know, your meat and fish that carry more methionine that we should perhaps maybe you know, eat less of? I mean, you know, have everything mm. in moderation, but you know, some people tend to you know, mm. like one particular um, item more. Like I love dessert, so you might just go for dessert, but there has a lot of sugar in it, right? So are there right. like certain foods that have maybe one too much uh, methionine that we should avoid? So it's interesting that you mentioned about sugars, because what we found was that the cancer stem cells, although they use a lot of, they need a lot of methionine, but the non-cancer stem cells, which are the bulk of the tumor cells, they tend to prefer sugar. And this speaks of the different types of um, dietary preference of the cancer cells themselves. And when you, when you come to think about, you know, what kind of food is important and what kind of food have more methionine or less methionine, it's not so easy, as you mentioned. But there are some small-scale clinical um, studies in human patients that are on what we call a methionine-restricted diet. And there's some evidence, they are not very strong evidence at this point in time, they are small-scale, to suggest that patients who were on the methionine-restricted diet tends to perform better in terms of their response to therapy. Again, I have to caution that, you know, these this are new information and small-scale trials. And any study that connects a diet to a disease, mm. usually you need to perform in a, in a large cohort um, study. And this remains to be seen. I would say that the jury is still out on, on this, connecting the methionine diet to, to cancer progression. Well, definitely, you know, new research, you're breaking ground. You know, thank you very much for doing this. And, you know, we look forward to hearing more on this study. But we've been speaking with Dr. Tam Wai-Leong, group leader for precision oncology at the Genome Institute of Singapore.